I guess we are recording. Oh, cool. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Let me do a little check if it's stuck. Yes, it is still recording. Woohoo! Excellent. I guess this it's, is a good sign. it's been a while again. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is 20 year. The year is 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Our brave adventurers have set forth. <laughs> <laughs> the year is it does feel like a sci fi year. <laughs> yeah. 2020 is a sci fi year. It's, I like it. It's future. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure, was Blade Runner set in 2020 or 2021? Uh, I'm sure some films were set I think it was, was like 19 or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've already lived through the Blade Runner years. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were interesting. So we're gathered here today uh, to celebrate the life and... No, we are here today <laughs> to <laughs> discuss the uh, time stream doodaddery and... Yeah, so basically... Well, even to clarify things, just to discuss and... Yeah, we decided that because we, right now, uh, first state of things. So in the grand scheme of all things Chaos Nova, we both have some solo projects in the works. Meanwhile, our next big co-op thing uh, with the working title Collision Course is also in a sort of... Uh, it, it has reached a stage where we need to start actively working on it again. And there is a common theme in uh, all of the works, solo and uh, co-op alike, uh, and that's the universe workings within the Chaos Nova fiction verse. So basically there, there, there are certain things we felt that uh, it would be helpful to vocalize, like think out loud. And uh, because we haven't posted any videos for a while, we decided it would also be a mm. nice uh, opportunity to gather some video fodder uh, for the masses. So, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to get straight into this. Uh, okay. The the time stream. Okay. So here's how I remember it. The in the forum, Chaos Nova comes from a forum. Used to be a bunch of people collaborating on stories together. And uh, in one of the stories, I wanted to finally penetrate to the void cloud, which is this big anomaly, sort of at the edge of edge of uh, settled space. And uh, I set my cruise up, and I did a did a whole thing, and it was it was it was we were on our way to the void cloud, and then uh, Kyoto, one of the other authors, came in, and as far as I can remember, um, something happened, and the cruise, like Corey, uh, I can't remember which Nux was sent back with Corey, and a couple of other people were sent back to. Uh, a location they'd been to before, and we're not we're not going to worry about spoilers in this. We're just going to go for it, right? So yeah. they get sent back to Tucker Nine, and uh, but it's a different it's different Tucker Nine. There's some things that aren't quite the same, and this and that. And uh, it turns out that they've gone up or down a time stream. Now I think it would be up because going up is a younger time stream, right? Not as much stuff has happened. Right, so this is where I chime in with the general mm -hmm. idea. So, <coughs> I, I need yeah, to, I'm in I, deep. I need to start bringing <laughs> in visuals. So, let's see. Uh, uh, so, the way our fictionalized timeline works is that basically there is like one major timeline or mo one major trunk mm -hmm. going forward. So the space-time continuum, there, there, there is like one continuum. And at the same time, off that big continuum, there are constant branchings. So we haven't been very specific in the stories how the branchings happen, but I think we have kind of sort of settled 
on the idea that the constant branching is a natural process. That's just how ta uh, space time works. Uh, uh -huh. And there can be trigger. So you can uh, trace certain bigger branching events down to some trigger events, but uh, timeline splitting or timeline branching is not inherently tied to some big thing like it would be, let's say, this This is not back in the future where you quote unquote change the timeline because there are always variations, there are always different branches. And as we go forward in this big continuum, you have like a set of branchings here, a set of branchings here, a set of branchings here, etc. So it's like it's, it's, co it's constantly fuzzy. <laughs> uh, I in a manner of speaking, you can imagine within within the bounds of our storyverse, you can imagine reality and events as this big fur ball or fuzz ball, uh, or or like or or think like uh, think like the offshoots in the plasma chamber. Like you have the center which is the quote-unquote central timeline. And then you have these branching and further branching offshoots. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our stories happen in those offshoots. So I don't think our stories have ever even occurred. Uh, our, our characters are, have never touched the core reality. We have always mm -hmm. been in, in the offshoots. Yeah. And if and and the, the thing that Knox mentioned is that certain characters as they interact with this uh, space-time anomaly uh, they find themselves quote-unquote back in time and in our rules well our our universe sandbox back in time means closer to the central uh, to the center of the fur ball, so the trunk. Yeah, closer to the yeah. trunk. So if you move within a reality offshoot, because reasons, well, you don't you don't just move, but basically you you need to have certain technology. But if you have the means to move within the offshoots uh, of the reality, the closer to the trunk. You get <laughs> the the further the further back in time this feels to you, or in other mm -hmm. words, the variations uh, or the the offshoots get quote unquote thinner, or the you you could you could sort of probe the future if you if you're able to travel uh, farther uh, down the offshoot. So that's that's sort of one of the major principles that we are building many stories on. The way I sort of wrap my head around it, I made a note about this earlier, <laughs> is that the the three characters, uh, you've got OG Nux, who I consider is in the sort of baseline mm -hmm. timeline that most of the current stories take place mm -hmm. in, like Taking Flight and stuff like that. He's like the baseline. Um, and then you've got Elder Nux, who is from the a a further split in the time stream fur further down mm -hmm. and uh, he has somehow travelled back from a very or travelled to the prime the, the the one that OG Nux is in and he personally believes that he's gone back in time mm -hmm. but that's actually a massive point of contention within yeah. the story so the characters on occasion can feel that oh we have traveled back in time but what what has actually happened is that they have moved from a further offshoot closer to the trunk so to speak mm -hmm. uh, one important note though uh, certain central events such as the exodus from earth itself I think this is a trunk event so so like mm -hmm. in the in the long history or in the long run there, there, there are still certain trunk events that have led us to the part where we are starting to observe uh, the offshoots. But at the same time, most of the characters and what they do and where they go 
uh, happens in those offshoots of reality, not the not the main trunk. And I think mm -hmm. that's that is actually something uh, something that many things will lead up to is that after many adventures have happened and come together and mixed and mingled there will be certain movement towards the trunk events so so that would be a, a major thing which we haven't tackled yet mm -hmm. uh, and for example one of my uh, one of my solo stories that i'm working on right now uh, the uh, Esto futuristic it's always warm mm -hmm. at the base camp this one takes close th this one also takes place in a specific offshoot and the offshoots of that offshoot but it it happens closer to the quote unquote trunk than some other events so oh yeah i think it's it is happening in the same major uh, branch that many other stories are happening but it is but it is like several notches closer to the main timeline itself mm. and another major point is that certain people have acquired the technology to move up and down uh, these offshoots so so this is this is again this is like a major building block of the storyverse itself and as they do do their movements they try to keep the messier shit farther in, in the farther offshoots or uh, so to speak in the in the future where the time time seems to have gone further up mm -hmm. and they try to keep the interactions with the main trunk timeline to the minimum or or keep off there because it is something to be protected so there there is a sense of don't mess with the reality or don't mess with the timeline but it's like you get to mess with the drafts and you get to mess with the possible futures of the offshoots but you kind of try to not directly interact with the uh with the central trunk so that's mm -hmm. that's sort sort of sort of a thing Just uh, going back to the three characters I mentioned real quick. Uh, Elder Nux is older because of where of the time stream he comes from, and and Dark Chaos is younger because she yeah. comes from yeah, Chaos above being above the and goes down. Dark uh, Chaos being the twin sister of character mm -hmm. called Nux, and a version of her gets killed somewhere in the story. And then, so this leads us to another big theme: is that mm -hmm. overall, during the uh, adventures, during the stories, the characters will run into people they have lost along the way, but those are not exactly the same people. So it's mm -hmm. like you you can you can reconnect with your lost loved ones, but they won't be quite those people you lost. So so yeah. there's some friction coming from that. And uh, one of the key story points, uh, da uh, one of the versions of Chaos uh, lost her version of Nux, and OG Nux lost his version of Chaos. So they find some familiar ground, but they they uh, they are very clear with one another that they are not the people that they mm -hmm. lost. Mm -hmm. And and this is actually another point that the two of them come together against Elder Nux on because Elder Nux is pretending or not pretend he thinks he was previously OG Nux. He he thinks that that's the point he's trying to get across. That's what he strongly believes. But Dark but Chaos, she's got a bit more knowledge about the whole thing and mm. and OG Nux just straight up doesn't trust him, doesn't there are a lot of inconsistencies and uh, so there's there's a bit of contention between the three of them these are the elder nuts so that leads to a few <laughs> choice story and actually there's a massive i don't want to give too much away but at the end of sort of uh the quiet times chaos is she's anti-reclaimer right you, there's a big because she blames them for the loss of her brother so she goes on this sort of tear but 
Nux, OG Nux, is actually able to convince her that it's not what her her Nux would have wanted. And there's a big sort of character development bit there for Chaos where she sort of calls it a little bit mm-hmm. and and comes to the conclusion, well, I might have lost my Nux, but there there is someone here who cares about me mm-hmm. and I should focus on that more. So there's some character development mm. there. Practical note. Uh, so- mm. Something that we have planned for the website for a while and I think we... It's about time we got started. We're not quite going to make a world Bible or anything because that is a huge work and a reader-friendly world Bible would take more time from us than actually telling the (laughs) stories and telling the stories takes priority. Uh, But I think we could get started with making up the notes of what's what. So... If we uh-huh. use if we use words like reclaimer or void cloud willy nilly in the conversation, yeah. uh, we can link we can put the link in the description and say yeah reclaimer, see this explanation here or what's uh-huh. a void cloud, uh, what's uh, what's downstream, what's upstream. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this was a side note. <coughs> I do tend to just throw the words around like everybody's going to know what they mean and I think that's just a side effect of me being so far in the eye <laughs> of the storm right now. Yep. Uh, ooh, I'm ooh, deep. Ooh. The eye of the eye of the storm uh, is another good metaphor for the trunk of reality. Mm. Ooh. Talking so, of storms it's been very windy here recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here. We we're hardly getting any snow this winter. It, it kind of looks like over there which is disgusting <laughs> but uh, but instead of uh, instead of normal uh, cold and snow we've been getting uh, quite a bit of wind instead mm. because because it's like the moment there is any continental influence moving in with the cold air the winds turn and oh where from <laughs> nope. we're, we're getting cold. Uno reversal yeah like oh let's get the maritime winds now yo <laughs> oh this, um, this this was another tangent so <laughs> shall shall we shall we wrap up this uh, warm up mm-hmm. mm-hmm yeah i think so we're we're heading there so i'm going to bank this recording what was that